send us. So there you go, perfect. <laughs> um, so also a few housekeeping items. Obviously most of you are muted. So thank you for that. We just wanna make sure that we can hear Carmela as best as possible. And this is supposed to be an interactive session. So feel free to leave your comments in the chat. I'm gonna be monitoring them, helping to let Car Carmela know when there are questions and make sure we get those all answered. There will also be a Q&A at the end that we are happy to ans uh, answer questions as well. Um, and then you guys heard the recording go off. The recording will be posted on the uh, talent board website after the session is completed. And so Carmela, you're up, let's get started. Can't wait to hear a little bit awesome. more about how we can start branding and be better at networking. Oh, cool. Thanks so much for the intro, Kylie. And um, thank you everyone for joining us here today. I know it's, you know, summer break for many of you and it's a Thursday out of all day. So thank you for joining us um, for this workshop series. Um, so like Kylie said today, we're going to be talking about personal branding and networking. Um, but before I kind of get started on everything, um, I'll do a little quick intro on myself. Um, as you can see here, my name is Carmela. Um, I help out with URX and One Rec, which is a professional community for early talent professionals. Um, I help support funding for annual conference um, and various events throughout the year, like this one. Um, I've had experiences as a university recruiter and early talent recruiter at Robinhood and BitGo, uh, where I primarily supported hiring for engineering interns and new grads. Um, and so since today we're talking about personal branding and networking, um, I like to say that the core of my work has always been rooted and centered in mentoring and supporting students land amazing opportunities. And um, I, I say this because like many of you, not too long ago, um, I was also a student um, just trying to make sense of like the professional world and um, the what to's of building a career and you know how to put my, like what is a personal brand and just really trying to understand what opportunities are out there for me and, and how to network and all of that. Um, and as a first gen college student, a lot of that didn't make sense to me. And um, I'm, I'm really grateful that I am where I'm, I am now um, because of the mentors and, um, you know, just you know, friends and support systems and programs that really invested in exposing me to different perspectives um, and opportunities. And super, super grateful that I get to continue doing that now um, and, and be a bridge to connect, you know, many of you and to share like, you know, knowledge and information um, to help you all kind of try to understand like what opportunities are up there or like better understand how to like just tips and tricks um, to networking. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, so like the core of my work um, now is being in the early talent space, um, getting to share all these tips and tricks with you. Um, and like I said earlier, I'm based in LA. Um, and let me see, what's like a fun fact. I like drink most of my matcha, but I really like matcha. So um, that's a little bit about me. Um, so to share a little bit more of what's, uh, what's up for all of you today, here's a little bit of an agenda. Um, we're going to be talking about personal branding, um, how to set up your LinkedIn to really reflect, um, you know, your own personal brand, um, some networking outreaches and strategies, um, you know, that you all can use, like, while, you know, just kind of like navigating LinkedIn as a platform um, and leaving some time towards the end for any questions that you may have. Um, and so I hope you all are excited as the minions at the bottom. Um, who has watched Rise of Gru? You can let me know in the chat, but I still need to watch um, <laughs> Rise of Gru. Um, but super excited to just going through um, the agenda items for today. Um, so as Doja Cat says, let's get into it. So what is a personal brand? Um, so I like to say like, um, you know, when, when this question was asked of me when I was like a student like yourself, it was really, really overwhelming. Like, how do you even start? Um, I felt like Aquafina right here, like that's so nerve wracking. How do you even start describing like your professional experiences? If for example, you might feel like you don't have any, um, but I like to say your personal brand, um, you know, outside of your professional identity is really about visibility um, about yourself and the values that you outwardly represent. Um, and so like I say this because your personal brand is, you know, even beyond like your professional identity is intentional. Like um, it's how you want people to see you. Whereas like reputation is about credibility. Your personal brand is about, um, you know, what your beliefs are, what, you, what are your values um, in a professional like setting, of course. 
Um, for example, like I mentioned earlier, the core of my work and the values I carry is really community, accessibility, opportunities, and that has been rooted in students and being um, in student environments. Um, and so that's a little bit more of like the keywords and phrases that I tend to highlight in my LinkedIn profile um, to share a little bit more of my personal brand is being around students. And so um, I know like when you're, when you're trying to figure out what the personal brand is for yourself, um, these are some great questions that I've listed to start asking, you know, and then building it that out for you. Um, what skills or talents are you most proud of? What skills are you curious about but have yet to build? What kind of tasks and projects energize you? And I think, you know, and, and the list can go on. These are just some great guiding questions for that. Um, when I was a student, I, I took some time. I, I remember this so like vividly. I went to a coffee shop with one of my friends um, to help build out my LinkedIn profile and started just like had a brainstorming session, writing out like what I'm interested in, what are my skill sets and these are, you know, just kind of accomplishments that I've had from like involvements in organizations or just like past projects and listing those all out. That is all part of your experiences and your own personal brand. Um, and, you know, after you kind of like do that brainstorming activity, what I would say is categorize like those pieces of you because, you know, that eventually at the end will become like your personal brand. Um, so, yeah, I would say like that's a really great starting point um, to building out your own personal brand and we'll get into it like a little bit more later. Um, but I actually want to make this really engaging. So I, I want to hear from some of you who comes to mind when you think of like a really, really strong personal brand. Like when you think of people maybe you've seen on LinkedIn or just um, some people in general, like, you know, from your own like, uh, like industries that you're interested in pursuing, like who comes to mind when you're like, wow, like I think of so-and-so and I think of marketing. I think of so-and-so when it comes to leadership. I think of so-and-so when it comes to like engineering. I'd, I'd love to hear from, from all of you, like who comes to mind. And you can unmute yourself more than happy to like make this like a really collaborative um, discussion or just like drop it on, in the group chat. Ooh, Kim Kardashian. The Kardashians honestly have such a strong brand. Nike. And I'll share some of mine in a bit, but yeah, I would love to hear from some folks like, um, for example, Sandy and Edith um, for, for Kim Kardashian, like what are, like, why does she come like to mind? Like, what do you think about when, when you hear that name? Like what type of work they do? I think for me, it's like whenever she gets an opportunity to talk, she just slides her makeup brand into the conversation somehow. So that's just all that she represents. I remember, um, you know, like watching, I don't know if it was like a blog video or like the, the 73 questions. And it's literally the same question that they asked Selena Gomez, what, what's the most important thing to you? Selena said, I mean, she said, something about a makeup thing that she has. So, you know, like she speaks about the brand all the time and that's all she is because I, I don't know, I don't know if it's like, it's a good thing, but then it's just, you know, that's the type of person that she is and that's what she is with them. Yeah, no, I, I really love that. It's like, when you're thinking about like what you said, like makeup, right? Like you think about her and like you think about her brand and. Um, I think so much of like your own personal brand is it's like an pretty much like encompasses, you know, just skills, traits and qualities that you like really thrive in. And I like to say, like, it's also if you were to have a TED talk, what's the topic that you can talk about, like confidently? And I would say like that's a big part of your personal brand. And um, like Kim Kardashian, you know, I swear she probably could talk about like her different you know businesses. She's like an entrepreneur and she you know, she has all these things to talk about. Um, and so um, since I, um, I see in the group chat, no one else has shared anything. So I'll, I'll share a little bit more about um, some other folks. Ooh, Tabitha Brown, Corin, um, Tabitha Brown. Um, so Corin, what, what do you think about, um, and if you don't mind putting you in spot and feel free to just drop it in the chat. Um, how come Tabitha, like what is Tabitha Brown's like personal brand to you? 
I just can't breathe yet. Oh my gosh, Mary. Awesome, awesome. Right, so these like, I, I love that you're putting like these words because these are the first thing that comes to mind when you're thinking about this person. And so when you're building like your own personal brand, like what are the words that you want people to think about um, when they think of you, right? So those are, those are things, you know, just to start keeping in mind. Um, I'll move on to our, our next slide. So an example of someone that comes to my mind right away when I was actually thinking of personal brand is, is Gary Vee. Um, who here knows about him? Feel free to yeah, let me know, raise your hand or whatnot. Um, but I, I thought of Gary Vee. All oh, heard about him. Sorry. Excuse who, who doesn't oh. know Gary V? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, he, like you said, um, he has such a strong personal brand, and you know, you can see this like even outside of LinkedIn, like on TikTok, on YouTube, on all these different like social media platforms. He has this really strong presence about his type of work, and so uh, you know, when you search his LinkedIn account, this is the first thing that you see when you land on his page. Like you see his banner. Um, you see his headline and you know right away, like this man is the chairman, he's an entrepreneur, he's, you know, all about business and marketing, like that's the first impression that you get. Um, and he makes this really like present throughout his LinkedIn profile and I'll go into more details about this in a bit. Um, but, you know, like when you're thinking of building out like your, or even like think of the LinkedIn profile that you have, or if you're thinking about building one, um, Think about like, you know, even just like the first things when you land on your page, what do you want? What impression do you want to leave like on people? Um, and from the get go, like we can see here, like from Gary Vee's like own LinkedIn account, um, you know, these are the things that like he, he thrives in, like this is his line of work. Um, and so I'll go to the next page. Um, and so if you click on his profile, there's, and there's different components to your LinkedIn profile that I'll go into more details um, in a bit, um, just to help you make your own like personal brand really apparent um, and, and strong. Um, so for example, like here, I, I screenshotted um, Gary V's like recent, one of his recent posts, like which you can see right here and his about section. Um, and so uh, I, I wanna throw this all to you again. What are like some keywords like from his post, like right here um, and, and take a couple, you know, take a minute like to read through um, and also his about section um, that show his personal brand. Like what are those words that come to your mind when you're, when you're reading like his profile? And I'll share a little bit more to you about like what words come to my, or came to my mind when, when I read through these, but I'd love to hear from you all first. And like I said, feel free to unmute. Uh, I wanna make this as collaborative as possible. leader, entrepreneur. Those were definitely words that, that came to my mind as well. He's done it all. <laughs> he has done it all. He's done so much. Um, it's motivational. I think that was one thing that came to, to my, my mind too. He's, you know, he posts a lot of motivational content. Um, you know, he's a hustler. Um, and he says that like in his about section, he's an entrepreneur at heart. He builds businesses. And this about section in your LinkedIn can come off, you know, as a really powerful section to explain a little bit more about what you're passionate about um, and the work that the work that you've done. Um, and I'll share a template for that, like I said, like later after we get through some of these examples. Um, but any other words or phrases that some of y'all want to share before I move on to the next slide? Alrighty, I'll move on to the next slide. Oh. Ooh. Okay, so um, I have another profile that really stood out to me. Um, and so this is from Jonathan Javier. He is a CEO at Consulting, which I think is a really great resource for so many um, of you too. They post a lot of um, content about just job searching, networking, finding and landing internships, um, all of that. But he has a really strong, um, really, really strong uh, LinkedIn profile. Um, that I think, you know, you all can use as like um, an example too, into, in terms of like building your own personal brand. Um, so what really stood out to me here when looking at his profile is he has a really strong headline, um, like from the get-go. This is the first thing you see when you search this person on LinkedIn. Like you see this headline right here, CEO. Um, uh, he, uh, at Consulting and Resume, Res, Resume AI, um, he helps people find jobs. He helping non-traditional backgrounds. Okay, awesome. So this person, um, you know, 
helps people and has probably resources that, you know, um, in terms of just the job search. Um, uh, and then you can see like, he talks about career, networking, all of that. So I know this person is in the career kind of like landscape slash industry. Um, and his banner also like reflects that. He's turning underdogs into winners. He has resources um, that he can share to really help with that process. And so, um, you know, from the get-go, really, really strong impression. He has a clear profile picture. I know who he is from the get-go. Um, and yeah, so really, really um, great pro series, distinct headline. Um, he's confident in like, in terms of just like laying out um, his profile um, and has terms people search for. So, yeah. Um, and then when you go into his profile also, um, like I mentioned, like similar with Gary Vee, he really utilizes the different sections of his LinkedIn to talk a little bit more about his work. And this is where you can really shine about your personal brand because you can make that impression from the get-go from like your profile picture and, um, you know, your headline. But when you get into, get into like the nitty gritty of LinkedIn, um, for example, like this section right here, the featured section, this is where you can link a lot of like your past work or just things that, you know, you feel just add a little bit more to like your own experiences and um, that you want to highlight uh, that reflect a little bit more of um, what you want to do. This is a really great section to utilize that. Um, and then his about section really gets into the details about his highlights as well. So, um, oops, sorry about that. Um, but some of his highlights like include projects and res like resources from current and past work. Highlights in the About Me section, breaking down his achievements and accomplishments, including keywords to his line of work, and an easy to follow, uh, and it's super easy to follow along. Um, and you know, from from here, like when I look at like someone's like About Me section to better understand like what they do, it's really awesome when I see like what their mission is and like what they're passionate about. And so Jonathan makes it clear here that his mission is to turn underdogs into winners. Um, you know, he's always strived to work in the top tech companies in each industry um, and, you know, really helping thousands get there too. And that's the purpose um, as to why he's making content on this platform. So I think when you're, you know, thinking about your own LinkedIn profile, think about like what you're passionate about. Like what, what is your mission? What's your personal mission? How does that tie into, you know, the type of work that you're trying to pursue? I think that always really makes an impact and to better understand what your personal brand is. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get a little bit more um, into it in the next post. So um, now that I've gone a little bit more over some of those examples for LinkedIn accounts, I wanna get into setting up you know, your own personal brand on LinkedIn. And so like I said earlier, think of those questions from that very first slide. Um, and all of this will be shared with you, I believe. So you'll have access to these slides as well um, to, you know, to kind of sit down and think through. Um, what those answers are, but think of like your values, your belief systems, um, what you thrive in, like what, um, what like past experiences you really enjoyed. Um, and that can, you know, really be great um, content for your about me section. Um, but let me break down um, some general tips to setting up your personal brand on LinkedIn. So some general tips, use a profile picture that clearly shows your face. Um, I know some people tend to like put um, like their whole like you know, sometimes I don't really like, I don't even see like the person's like face and I'm like, who are you um, on LinkedIn? So choose something that's clear. You know, you can be creative about it. I know there's different resources online where you can even play around with like um, the background. So like Canva, I think there's another one. I'll, I'll think about it. I, um, but there's another one where you can play with like the background, but make sure that like your face is clear in the profile picture, utilize the header space, um, you know, and it could be like, Jonathan's and um, similar to Jonathan's and Gary V's, like this can be your socials, um, just like, you know, how you want to present yourself. It could just, there's also like, I think um, LinkedIn banners that you can choose to just to fill up that space. Um, create a distinctive profile headline. So this could be your current position, your brand's tagline, what you're passionate about. Um, I also like to say, like, think of the space of like how your friends and colleagues describe you. So you could say you're um, I think when I was a student, I would be like, um, student at UCLA, uh, passionate about getting, uh, passionate about um, building experiences in, um, in higher education, something along those lines. Um, and then I think what I put was like, uh, what is it called? Um, passionate leader in, in diversity. So think of words and catchphrases that you 
you know, like your friends maybe describe you as, or even you like to describe yourself. Um, are you an experienced mark, like experienced marketer, obsessed about growth, passionate about building diversity programs? Like think of those catchphrases. Um, and, you know, that's something that you could add to your um, headline that can really make an impact to your personal brand. Um, and this is the first description people will see. So, you know, make it count. Um, another tip is create an intentional about me section. I think I've emphasized this a ton um, in this presentation so far. Um, you know, like in that about me section, I'll share a template too that um, you all can use in a bit um, to really break that down. But, um, you know, think of like what your personal mission is. Think about, you know, how you want to grow in your career or think about, um, you know, what are the industries of interest to you? That about me section is going to share. So like, it's going to be so important to your own personal brand, but also really helpful when people search for, you know, job, like for potential candidates, you know, as a recruiter, like I've definitely like found candidates by searching keywords and phrases that they put in their about me section or in their headline. So let's say like, I'm looking for like a software engineer or a backend engineering like intern searching that up, like sometimes I'll find profiles that really put that in their, um, in their headline or even in their about me section. And, you know, that leads to a conversation. Um, and then I like to remind you all that LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile is not just a copy and paste of your resume. Like your resume is tailored. You, I like to say your resume is tailored to like a specific job that you're applying to or like a specific role. Um, but your LinkedIn is a general overview of who you are as a professional. So it's like, I could have had a job as, um, let's say like as a marketing intern, but like now I wanted to switch into engineering. Um, but you know, like that's still something like that helped with my own story. Um, so like that, you know, that could be on my LinkedIn, but it's not, it's not necessarily on my resume. So, um, you know, like I, I like to make that dif um, difference there. Um, and then just quick tip two, quantity and impact of your work in every section like of your LinkedIn is really important. Don't just like, you know, dump like a lot of information or like, you know, you can have like a separate document of all your experiences, but definitely cater your LinkedIn to highlight, um, like to highlights from um, your past experiences. So next slide. So setting up your LinkedIn account. So actually um, I brought up like Jonathan earlier from Consulting. He actually had a really great workshop that broke down um, just like a, a breakdown of how to build out your about me section and um, how to build up your profile. And so here's an example um, that you know, I really like and would love to share with all of you. Um, so like I said earlier, like when you're building out your profile, have a clear like profile picture of who you are. Like I want to see your face. I want to, you know, I want to get to learn a little bit more about you. Um, you can add like, you know, your current role. So here we see that Wendy, some marketing strategist, um, but something really fun about her too, like rock climbing extraordinaire. So you can add, you know, as many or as little as you want, but I think the more that you add about yourself, like in your headline, that's the impression that I'll get like of you as a viewer, but also as a recruiter. Um, she has a really clear like headline, here, I mean, um, banner here as well. She's a content creator. So cool. Like she's in marketing. She's a content creator. I'm interested. I want to see what content she makes. So, um, you know, like for all of you, like think about that, like when, you know, when you, uh, when a recruiter is viewing your profile, what do you want them to like see? How can you like pique their like interests? Um, and then this about me section is a really great, like um, just really great uh, structure that you all can follow. Um, you know, if you haven't built out your about me section or want to improve it a little bit more. Um, I personally like emojis. I mean, if you search up my LinkedIn account, there's a lot of emojis on my about me section up to you, um, however you want to um, utilize that section. But um, yeah, feel free to screenshot this, you know, have an intro um, about, you know, yourself, um, where, you know, where you're at, like in terms of like school, like soon to be graduate, um, you can add all these little um, uh, fun facts. But I think the, the biggest component of your about me section is really talking about like your past experiences, highlights about the work that you've done um, and how you want to grow in the future. So it can be like two to, two to three sentences. Um, and like what you're passionate about. So yeah, I would say break it down into these sections. These are the most important ones. Um, highlight your strengths, use keywords. Um, for example, like social media strategy, content creation, marketing research. These are the things that a lot of recruiters and people that search you know, for potential candidates look for. And so if you have that, like in, um, in your about me section, your profile might come up like based off of the algorithm. Um, I see that Sandy has a question. 
So does LinkedIn, does your LinkedIn profile play a heavy role in recruiting process for young professionals? I would say it can make an impact um, into better understanding like your profile as a candidate. Um, you know, I think, like I said earlier, like we can have your resume as a recruiter, but sometimes I want to learn a little bit more about you. And sometimes like the hiring manager that I'm working for might want to learn a little bit more about like you too, outside of like what you've shared on your resume. So um, for, for that part, like we definitely like tend to look at like your LinkedIn profile to better understand like your like work history. Um, and also just kind of like a, as another like reference point about like who you are as a professional. So, um, you know, yeah. So I would say it does like play like an impactful role. Um, of course, it's not like, um, like it's just based off of your LinkedIn. I would say like the whole recruiting process is very holistic. So it plays like, um, and it, it placed an impact into um, that evaluation. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go on to the next slide. So this is just um, other portions of your LinkedIn. Um, so I wish I could have like done like a run through like live, but sometimes Zoom is kind of weird about that. So I just took screenshots, um, but under like your like LinkedIn profile, you have um, the about me section and then the highlight section. I didn't show it here but in the past like slides where we talked about um other examples um you know utilize the the highlight section um to put in past work if you have a personal website put it there if you have a project from like a past class that you were really excited about put it there if you were involved in like a student like leadership summit where you hosted a workshop put it there i want to know about it um and so yeah like link some of those things if you have like the actual like um, work for it, like and, and make it accessible. I think that's a really great um, space that LinkedIn um, can be used for. Um, and then so for the experience section, it's very similar to like what your resume is like, you know, in terms of just like breaking down the experience, quantifying your work, five to seven sentences. But I like to say that, you know, it's also a section to put in like your highlight key points. And sometimes with uh, restrictions on resumes, like you can't really like put all of your highlights on there. So utilize that section to, to share your highlights from like your past experiences, whether it was like a past internship or um, a past like leadership role or just like a past um, involvement. Um, I think those are really great ways to um, utilize the experience section. Um, and then, yeah, there's other components to your LinkedIn account, your education. If you've taken like classes or certifications like for certain things, um, in your own like industry or skill sets, put it there. Like we want to know. Um, I've definitely seen instances like in my own like recruiting experience where um, you know someone is trying to get an engineering internship, but they're not like a computer science like student. Um, but they've taken a lot of like certification classes or boot camps, um, you know, just to to help justify that gap and really like gain that experience. And those are things that that help us better understand your story. At the end of the day, like your LinkedIn account is your story. And that helps us like as recruiters and people that are searching for potential candidates or just like, um, you know, connecting with all of you, like your story. So um, definitely utilize the licenses and certification section. Um, I think uh, also your LinkedIn is, like I said, it's very holistic. Like put in like past volunteering experiences, maybe like whether it was, you know, uh, for students like yourself, like um, community-based organizations or um, just like, you know, student clubs that you're a part of, like those are all important. And sometimes I think we tend to forget that. Like when I was a student, I'd be like, oh, well, I don't really have a past internship, but I was really involved like on campus. Um, and I think those are things that can help, you know, help build your personal brand because you know, out, out of like your day-to-day -day as a student and going to classes, you're doing extra things like in terms of like involvement. And that is impressive. And you should be like part of that and highlight that. Um, so put, you know, definitely utilize the other sections of LinkedIn um, as well and helping shape like your own um, narrative. So yeah, those were some quick tips in terms of just like setting up your LinkedIn sections. Um, so now you have your whole LinkedIn account like set up, you're ready to go. You have like you know, you have your story, like you have your like elevator pitch down, how and where to start networking on LinkedIn. Um, and that's also, you know, that can be really overwhelming because it's like, there's so many profiles, like you can just search like anyone. How do you tailor your search? Um, so I have some, I think I have two tips um, in a bit that I'll share with you. So 
my first tip that, that was really helpful for me and is still really, really helpful, like for me as a young professional is utilizing like your college network. Um, so for me, um, so I went to UCLA for undergrad. Um, what you can do is like search up your institution on LinkedIn. There's a search bar, search up like your school. And then once you search it up, like find their page profile, go under the alumni tab. Um, and after you go in the alumni tab, you'll have this area right here. And so I can see here, okay, there's 550,000 people from my university that are on LinkedIn. That's a lot of people. Those are people that I could talk to and learn a little bit more about, like about their careers. So that's a lot of people. I don't want to talk to 550,000 people. Um, so I'm going to tailor my search and enter some keywords. So for example, if I'm interested in marketing and engineering, I'll enter that there. And um, actually on LinkedIn, when you enter those words, that just like automatically filters it. Um, and then you could even, you know, after you put like marketing and engineering, let's say you're interested in um, breaking into fintech and you want to um, connect with someone from Robinhood. So search like marketing, engineering, Robinhood right here on the search bar. And it should show up a list of people under like underneath when you scroll down um, that are currently there. So what you can do once you um, do that is you can filter your list about like people to reach out to. Um, and that just like makes, you know, that's where LinkedIn can really be, you know, a platform to connecting like with people that have, you know, shared similar experiences or backgrounds as you and helps with networking a lot easier. Um, so um, yeah, I would, and then you could switch it up to, you could search like, um, you know, different roles. If you just like want to connect with someone and learn about their career, um, it really helps with like tailoring, tailoring like who to reach out to. Um, so that's one strategy there. Um, another one is um, trying to connect with the hiring managers, recruiters, and other people like from the company utilizing LinkedIn filters. Um, and so this right here is like what you'll see if you click on like the job section and just like search like all the way to the right. I'm sorry, I wish I like took a video of this, but like all the way to the right, there's like an all filters section. It should look like this. And basically what you can do is like add um, different things that you're curious about. Or like if let's say you're interested in like Google or like Amazon, you can literally like scroll down like in the section and add like that company. Um, and filter your search there when reaching pe reaching out to people that are currently like in those companies. Um, I would also say like search keywords and phrases to identify um, potential events and people that you can connect with. And so a phrase that typically tends to have like, or has had like success for me in the past is searching like happy to share, like that keyword phrase like on the search bar, because that will show a lot of posts of people that um, have just like, shared like where they're starting a new goal um, and usually when people share like um you know like where they're starting they tend to tag people that was involved in their um, recruitment process whether it was like a hiring manager or a recruiter and those are people that you can directly reach out to and send a dm to and could potentially connect with and could connect you to a potential opportunity so definitely like utilize all of these different components of linkedin here's an example um, of that so for example like the student like posted that they're happy to announce that they graduated and they have um, that they're joining Google and they're thanking the recruiter. So awesome, he tagged Jerome. Now, if I'm interested in Google and I wanna become a software engineer, I'll reach out to Jerome because he's, a, he's obviously like a recruiter for that team. That helps you like stand out um, in the whole like recruitment process because you're directly reaching out to someone. And um, you know, who knows, Jerome might be able to make the process like a lot like faster and easier for you because you directly reached out um, like and, and then could have like a potential starting conversation with him. Um, so I feel like that's another like strategy that, you know, has helped like a lot of people that I know in my own network and also myself. Um, fun fact, I actually landed my like Robin Hood um, job like after reaching out to my manager at the time um, like through LinkedIn like she shared a post about um, like open roles and then I just like sent her a, a DM and we started chatting through there so um, sometimes you know like some like people on LinkedIn um, you know if they're on there most of the times they really really want to help you and we'll, we'll be like really excited to have a chat with you sometimes some people you know I, I've had some student ask like what if they don't respond like what's the point like it could be really discouraging. Well, like you saw earlier, like just within UCLA, there's like 550,000 profiles. Think of LinkedIn as a whole. There's lots and lots of people on there that you can reach out to 
in batches and eventually one of them will, you know, will go find that could start like a, a conversation that could be a next step for your career. So um, don't be discouraged if someone doesn't say no. Um, all, you know, all they can do is like, you know, I mean, all you can really do is just like follow up. Like you're not bugging them if they don't say no, you know, kind of like move on to the next person that you see and, and could be of help like um, in terms of your search. Um, but yeah. So that's another one there. Um, these are some um, some of like the templates that I've used like to reach out to people before or I uh, other students like I've um, connected with have used before. Um, so feel free to feel free to screenshot this or use this like you know in your own like LinkedIn outreaches. Um, I like to say that when you're reaching out to someone on LinkedIn, the most important thing is make it like personalize your outreach. I think that always makes you um, stand out, like you're intentional in your outreach. And that makes me want to reply to you even more. So, um, you know, for example, like um, these are these are just like some of the generic ones, but like, um, let's say I'm trying to reach out to a UCLA alumni. Like I would say like, hey, like, I hope you're doing well. Um, I noticed that you're a UCLA alum. I'm one as well. And I noticed that you're, um, you know, I noticed your line of work in marketing. I'm, you know, extremely excited about building a career in marketing myself. And I'd love to chat more with you um, to learn a little bit more about your story and also like um, your experiences at so-and-so company. So I would say like something along those lines, but try to personalize like those outreaches um, as much as possible, because that definitely like catches like the person on the other side's like attention rather than just sending them like a request, you know, at the end of the day, like you can send as many requests to people, but if you're intentional about your outreach, I think that helps um, with standing out. So yeah, um, let's be like Isa from Insecure and be known people. Also if you, yeah, if you need a show to watch, Insecure is really, really good on HBO Max. Um, but yeah, I think, um, okay. So once you send out your DMs, and outreaches and someone gets back, they're like, yeah, I'd love to chat with you. Let's set up a time for so-and-so. Um, these are some great topics to, you know, just kind of to keep in mind, like when, when you're having that like 10 to 15 minute, like intro chat, um, you know, uh, definitely like personalize it to what you want to learn from that person. But um, I think ones that were really like helpful for me is really asking them like what their story, like their career story is, like what led them to their current role. Um, asking them about like, you know, just the company culture and the company that they're at, how that experience has been for them. Also like to help inform myself if I see myself in that company later down the line, um, what they do in their current day-to-day -day job, what excites them the most. Um, and yeah, these are just, and then some of the lessons too in their, in their career journey. And, you know, I, I, I think when you're a student, sometimes like when you're doing your search referrals are really um, can help, definitely help make you stand out um, in the recruitment process. Um, and it doesn't like, don't shy away from asking someone that you're chatting with if they can give you a referral to the company. Most of the times they're gonna be like, yeah, I'm super down to. Um, so yeah, don't, don't be shy to ask um, at the end of your chat. But definitely for the most of the chat, you know, ask a little bit more about, about them and like what work they've done and um, some, some um, parts about the company as well. Um, and yeah, so these are some tips there. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it in terms of like, you know, networking. I'm more than happy to answer like any questions you have. Like, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Like Schmidt here from New Girl. I don't know if y'all know the show. It's, it's like super old. Um, you got this, you know, like, you know, I think at the end of the day, like your personal brand and who you are is really being confident in your story and your skills and and what you're passionate about and, you know, going out there and trusting that like something will align with, um, you know, what, what is right for you and um, can help uh, further your, your career journey. So yeah, that's, that's um, pretty much the whole presentation. Happy to answer any questions anyone has. Um, and like this, Jeff, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for all of you. I know like recruitment season is all upon us and it's gonna be busy, but, you got this um, and you all just showing up here is, you know, such a big step to just really, um, you know, putting yourself out there and, and starting um, the process. So, yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Excellent yeah. job. As Carmela mentioned, 
You can unmute yourself to ask her questions. You can post in the chats. Um, it's a great way to start using those networking skills by putting yourself out there and applying some questions that you may have. So does anyone have any initial questions for her? Yeah, I, I apologize. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is it Nia? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Nia. Um, you can call me Emma if you want, <laughs> if it's hard for you to pronounce my name. Uh, thank you so much for this workshop. It's very helpful. I just have a few questions. Um, my first question is what you shouldn't share on LinkedIn. I see some of my friend, he shared like opinion, personal opinion about something. And I think it's kind of like sensitive, but I'm not sure if people really care. And the second question is, um, is this recommended that you should post at least once? I mean, um, on LinkedIn. Because people want to, I think maybe you, if you post every day or at least like four or five times per week, then you might catch an eye of recruiters on LinkedIn, I guess. But is that true? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, those are really great questions to me. So um, I'll address the first, I mean, the second one that you asked first um, in terms of posting. So like with any like social media site, right? Like the more you post, the algorithm will, you know, will, will help show up your post more. Um, I think, you know, I, I think it helps when you are like posting like content on LinkedIn, especially like maybe past projects that you've worked on. And, and I'm thinking of this as like in the student perspective, like if you have like past projects you've worked on, or if you're like looking for opportunities or have like personal projects that you want to share, like, I think that's a really great, like, way to post content and share that with people and like you said that could help catch the eye of like a potential like employer um, or a recruiter that you know you could have a conversation with and could be like your next opportunity so um in terms of like posting i would say um as much as you're comfortable i think the more you do it like you know i think that helps with your own personal branding in terms of like what projects you've done or like what your you know what your lessons and takeaways are i think for me as a recruiter, like whenever I see a student share like a past like internship reflection um, and like share their project, I usually tend to read it and I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. Like this person did so, so, and so. And that's something that you can even add to your own like LinkedIn page, like in the highlighted section, um, you know, about like, you know, a post that you've done. So um, yeah, I mean, I would encourage it. Like if, if you have things that like you want to like break down and share, um, I think it helps with your own branding. Um, in terms of the, and then in regards to the previous question about um, sharing like kind of like more sensitive material, I think I like to say, I, I would think about it as to like, is that like for you and your personal brand? Is that something that you want to share? So think about it in terms of like you and like what you want to share. Because diff different people on LinkedIn have different motives, right? Like they could share like really, really private matters. Um, that's what they want to share. I think as, you know, as, I think for me, like, I, I think, um, yeah, as, as long as you think that resonates with your personal brand, sure, I, I would shy away from it. Like, I think from a recruiter perspective, I think, um, yeah, I think I, I'd love to learn, I, I'd love to see more of like, kind of like your past, like, like work experiences. Um, but I mean, at the same time, like, LinkedIn is also a holistic, like profile, like a holistic platform. Um, so sharing like, you know, your experiences with other identities you carry, I think, um, I wouldn't say like, no, you shouldn't do that, especially if it's like an issue that's important to you, like go for it. I think that also helps with your personal brand. So I think at the end of the day, like think about you and the personal brand that you want to carry. So, yeah. Thank you for your question. Anyone else? Oh, Edith, you raised your hands. You are welcome to take the floor. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for the presentation. It was it was honest, useful, and light um, But I have a question about um, the connections that we make on LinkedIn. I've noticed that I have a hard time maintaining them. Just because I think maybe it's because of the culture I was raised in. Relationships don't feel transactional from where mm -hmm. I come from. But on LinkedIn, it feels like. It feels very parasitic, like I'm connecting with you just to get something out of it. And I think that, that's messing up with how I deal with it. 
because I don't know how to maintain it because it feels like it has a, mm. it has an end goal. So I don't know. Maybe could you talk more about how to maintain that and how to make it feel a bit more organic and natural and not feel like I'm 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 forcing it just to get something out of it. Yeah, that that's a really really great question. Um, I think when like for example, um, earlier when I was going over like some of the templates for reaching out, I think that's you know I think in in that first initial step, like having that that intention to build a relationship with someone makes a really good impression, and hopefully you know they they get back right. Like sometimes people get tons of messages on 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 LinkedIn, and we you know sometimes people don't get to all of them. Um, but I think having from the get go that intentionality of like, you know, like building a relationship with someone or, um, you know, just th that intention of like having um, an organic conversation, I think you can tell, like, you can tell that like from your first initial outreach. And then let's say you hop on a call with someone or you hop on like a video chat. Um, you know, like, I think, I, I, I think just like having that organic conversation, like, as if you were talking to a friend. I like to say this um, to like, you know, just other people in general. It's like, at the end of the day, like, even if so-and-so is a director, like we're all people, like, you know, like I think ask them like the questions as if like you'd ask like, you know, like your professor or your TA in school, like, I want to learn a little bit more about like what work you've done or like this, this and this. And um, I think that helps with just like creating that space that this is not a like a transactional, um, conversation and it's about getting to know one another. So um, I would say, yeah, I think um, following up is always really good too, because you can have a conversation and sometimes it ends there and it's like, okay, well, we had a chat and we shared some vulnerable topics and whatnot and some of our goals, but it kind of ends there. Um, but um, yeah, I say like following up is also like, I think really like um, intentional too. Um, in terms of like building that organic relationship um, and thinking of them too. I think that's that's been successful for me is, or what's been successful for me is like having conversations with people and still like keeping them warm, like afterwards, like reaching out like from time to time, whether it's like, oh, cool. Like I see you posted this or like, I saw that you have a new role in so-and-so and, -so, and um, continuing to have conversations even beyond like the initial questions I had like from them. I think that like helps, you know, just kind of, build that relationship as professionals as to like, okay, it's not transactional. We're all rooting for each other um, and whatnot. I hope that was helpful, but yeah, that's the how I would go about it. Yeah, that was helpful. I guess my my question is um, like, how would I know if I'm overstepping? <laughs> I don't know if that's, if, if that's a weird question, but like what kind of questions would you ask that, that are, it's like you want to build your fall, but it's not like you're over. Does that make gotcha. sense? Yeah, um, I couldn't really hear the question too well, but um, is it like how do you like what questions would you ask like to build like a more organic relationship with someone? Exactly, exactly. Like, could you yeah. could you give me examples of like questions or maybe like topics of discussion? I don't know. I'm just having such a hard time with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, I'm trying to think of some, and um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some. And Kylie, like, also feel free to chime in if there's like any like things that come to mind too, um, like for you, like that you, you can share. Like, feel free to. Um, but yeah, let me think. Um, I always think I like being asked of what advice did I wish that I had when I first started off or at the beginning of my career. I think if you ask someone. What is something you wish you knew or uh, advice you learned later in your career that would have helped you from the beginning? That's a great way to get some personal information, learn a little bit more about them, while also getting some advice that you yourself may have learned later in your career, getting that ahead of time. Um, and I think that people like to share their success. So if you're asking about someone's success, People are excited to talk about that. They're proud of their accomplishments. Um, and it's a positive thing that you can ask that um, allows you to also build that connection. So my, my advice would be things you wish you would have known at the beginning of your career and um, tell me about your successes or what led you to be successful. 
Oh, I really love that. And um, another thing that came to my mind too, Edith, is like, what are some of those lessons too that you've learned like throughout your career journey? Um, Cause they could also just share a little bit more too about, um, you know, some kind of like some of the, the things along the way that have shaped like their own career path. So, yeah. And then... Sandy, I said in the chat that you could go next. So yeah, you have the stage as well. Mm -hmm. All right, appreciate that. Yeah, first, um, thank you, Carmela, for this insightful obsession and, and the knowledge that you introduced. Um, so my question is regarding to um, when we building our personal brand on LinkedIn, um, what if we have like multiple interest areas um, that we're um, like positions or um, direction that we're heading into, um, but on our LinkedIn profile. So do we include all of them or um, how can we kind of balance between um, kind of focus on certain area versus um, like make others think that we are like not very targeting into one spe specific direction? Yeah, no, that's that's a really, really great question. Um, so like I said earlier, like your LinkedIn profile is really like more of like your like encompassing like your holistic like experiences. So like your about me section, um, I would say like include on there like your different like interest areas. Um, whether let's say it's like totally different industries like marketing and then data science. Um, but like put that in that section, um, you know, to, to also expand your search. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like you have your resume that can, that is more targeted to like specific like role or industry that you are targeting. Um, but your LinkedIn profile is more about like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, earlier like your personal brand um, as a professional. So um, you can, I would say like, have those sections um, still like be on there and you can use those as reference points when you're talking to someone like let's say like a recruiter screenshot um, about your LinkedIn profile um, that uh, you know that you can focus on but um, yeah I would say like add add all of the different like areas that you are interested in um, let's say it's like let's say you're interested in like five different areas I would say maybe try to focus on you know kind of like the top three um, and that helps expand like your search in terms of like building your own like profile too. Um, but yeah, no, I totally resonate with you. I think when I was in college, I had so many interest areas and I was like, wait, I like everything. Um, so I definitely, you know, even if you look at my LinkedIn now, I think I still have some of those things. Like if you go like down in my experiences, um, but that is all part of my story. And that's like what led me here today. So I would say like include like those projects that you worked on and you can expand a little bit more when you're chatting with a recruiter or a hiring manager in the future. Okay, I see. Yeah, thank you so much for our um, answer. Yeah. And then I think, how are we doing we, on time, Kylie? We have see. about two minutes, so we probably don't have any more time for questions, but we did have a great idea in the chat since this is about networking, you are more than welcome to reach out to us on LinkedIn. Um, yes. Our names are on our screens. You can search us on LinkedIn and practice all those networking skills Carmela just told you. Um, and feel free to reach out to us. It's a great way for um, us to connect. Yes, I'm gonna drop mine on here. So feel free to reach out. Um, but thank you all so much for, yeah, for the session. And I think um, Carly has some of the wrap up um, things for, for you all. I do. First off, Carmilla, thank you. Excellent job. Um, I always personally like learning from these events as well, especially with networking and branding because it's constantly evolving. Um, as far as some reminders for you guys, uh, look out for an email from Talent Board to register for the next two sessions on Tuesday, July 26, receiving the offer, deadlines and negotiation. This one is hosted by Netflix, so make sure that you're checking it out. I'm sure Netflix will have amazing advice. And on Thursday, July 25th, make sure that you are checking out Make the Most of Your Internship by MongoDB. Um, those are some great sessions coming up. And I did get a direct message in the chat about future uh, and past recordings for those sessions. So um, I was told that uh, in the next two weeks, it is coming into the end 
of summer prep session. And you can find the recordings for all of the sessions on their website. So make sure you check out the ones that you missed. Um, and we have a winner. We actually have two winners who will receive a resume reviewed by one of the talent board members. So I was sent it in the chat, but Edith and me, you won. Nice job. Congratulations. <laughs> um, you will receive the resume review. Um, so keep an eye out, I'm sure, for your emails as well. Um, and as we hit 3 p.m., thank you all for joining us. We are super excited to have a talk with you and hope you have an amazing summer and get to complete the summer bucket list that you let us know about. And as as always, Carmela, thank you so much. Um, I know I said it a bunch of times, but you did an excellent job. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great day. See you all on LinkedIn. <laughs>